complete control of the of the nam let's say what does that mean complete control of the nam and i i always go back to this saying of kabir in the guru he says i used to chant ram 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 and now ram is chanting kabir 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 and so i i studied that a bit and I also saw in the same area of the Guru he says I used to shout Hara 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 and now Hara is running continuously all the time and so what that meant to me was that when we when we chant mantra and we do jap we are changing our frequency to that of this what we call the Shabbat and Sikh Dharma it's called the Shabbat and it means the sound current of the universe. And so to me what Kabir is saying is he did the job on, the, on these mantras. And then at some point he became aware of the Shabbat, the, also called in the, the Guru the Anahad, the unstruck melody. Yogis say that there's two forms of sound in the universe. There's Ahad sound and there's Anahad sound. A hud sound is when you hit something against something else, creates a vibration in the air, and the molecules of the air, which spreads out through the molecules, goes into our ear, vibrates our eardrum at that same vibration, and our um, acoustic center of the brain interprets these sounds. That's how, that's how we hear. And it causes this physical vibration called an a hud sound. The Anahad sound, however, is a sound that is spontaneously, continuously sounding in the universe. So it's called the unstruck melody. There's not two things striking one another to make a sound. It's just the sound, what, we, what the scientists say is it's the sound left over from the Big Bang. They call it cosmic radiation. In Christianity, in the Bible, of course, in the book of John, the beginning, it says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word is God. That's exact perfect statement of Nad Yoga. Word and the word Shabbat, the word Anahad, are exactly the same concept. And we have many ways of meditating on this sound. But it's, uh, my experience of it is, is it's, you can't decide, okay, I'm going to now listen to the Anahad. And you sit down and just listen to it because it doesn't come. And Guru Nanak actually explains it in Japji very well. He explains the process of it. He says, Gurumukhi Nadang, Gurumukhi Vedang, Gurumukhi Rehya Samai. And this word, Gurumukhi, is very interesting because it's three form. There's Gurumukh, there's Gurumukhe with a Sihari. It's a type of a vowel sound, a diacritical mark. We have it in Gurumukhi. And then there's Gurumukhi, which is the alphabet. That's with a different kind of diacritical mark, Sihari, or Bihari, rather, E Bihari. So Gurumukhi is the alphabet that is clear. And Gurumukh refers to a person whose face is turned to the guru. So that's referring to an actual person, a person who's immersed in the teachings. And the guru muke with the sehari means to churn the shabad with the mouth. It, because it literally means in the guru's mouth. When you have a sehari, it means something is in something. So it means in the guru's mouth. And I came to understand that everybody's mouth is the guru's mouth when we chant Gurbani. Our mouth is no different than Guru Nanak's mouth. We have the 32 teeth with the two meridian points behind each teeth, and then we have the upper palate with the other 32 uh, meridian points in the upper palate. Guru Nanak had exactly the same apparatus, which collects to the um, brain chemistry and to the vagus nerve, and all the systems of the body are affected by the glandular nervous system. And this Yogiji explained very, very clearly, and um, I tried to simplify and make it very clear in this book of Nad Yoga. And so that whole system of, and this is Jap, we're talking about chanting with the mouth, with the tongue, making a physical sound. 
jump. You know, it just changes our frequency and changes the way our brain chemistry secretes. Very, very powerful. So Guru Nanak says, Gurumukhi Nadang, by churning these meridian points and using the tongue and creating these sounds and vibrations and also tones, musical tones, he says, Nadang, Gurumukhi Nadang, that the Nad, the sound current of the universe, is activated in the person who churns the mouth, churns the Shabbat Guru with the mouth, Gurumukhi Nadang. And then he said, Gurumukhi Vedang, that all the wisdom of the universe also is activated in the person who turns the Shabbat Guru with the Guru's mouth, in the Guru's mouth. Gurumukhi Rehiya Samai, that when a person does that practice, then he remains merged in the sound current. So that line of Japji very clearly explains the system, how it works. That when we do Japa, we do chanting, we do meditation, we do the Kriyas, then they change our frequencies so these, the, the wisdom and the sound current, we become aware of it, it becomes activated in the person. But until a person is, is ready for it, it cannot, it doesn't happen. I, I remember my first experience of it and then trying to recapture the experience and I couldn't do it, I couldn't, I couldn't find it again, I couldn't hear it. But then it would just come of itself. Sometimes doing Ardas, I remember the second time I heard it was doing an Ardas, I go, oh, there it is. It kind of, so then I was thinking this term of remembrance, because it's always uh, translated as remembrance of the Nam. Nam being, again, the sound current, the Shabbat, this, this sound that is actually, is the part of God that we can actually tune into within ourselves. Nanak again says, gat gat vaje nad, that this sound current is vibrating in every human, in every person, in every heart. Gat gat vaje nad. So it's not a big, mysterious thing. It's in every person, every human being on the earth has this vibration of infinity of God is, is vibrating inside them. All we have to do is change our frequency and become quiet enough to hear it becomes activated in us. So this, this term of Simran to me is when the, that nod becomes activated and all of a sudden the sound envelopes a person. It's a presence and it becomes all pervading. It's everywhere you go, it's there. And Nanak often said, Meditate on God through all the watches of the day and night. And I thought, yeah, how, who can do that? How many of us yoga students or Sikhs, how many of us actually can meditate like using japa 24 hours a day? Not possible. But when this nod is activated, that sound is there. So when you read japti, the sound is there. When you're talking to someone, the sound is there. When you're working. I mean, it has to be a little bit quiet, of course, to become aware of it. But that is, to me, is the state of Simran. And so Japa is not really Simran. Japa leads to Simran. Meditation, Dhyan. Meditation is, is called Dhyan. It's, it's a concentration. When we practice concentration on the sound currents of mantra and Gurbani, the, nod, the frequency raises and the nod is activated. But the actual, that actual state of Simran comes spontaneously by itself. So I'd like to, um, we can sing a little bit, a, uh, a passage from a Shabbat by Guru Arjan, which he basically explains his system. He's, he doesn't talk about Simran, but he's talking about the Shabbat and how it enters the mind and how we uh, become colored with that, how we become imbued with it, and how it brings a state of ecstasy all through day and the night time. So if, if Onkar, if you could post that, we'll sing it a little bit. Yeah, I shared it in the chat. Oh, it's in the chat, okay. 
Yeah, there's a PDF there for the English and transliteration and the Gurmukhi in English, if people do understand Gurmukhi. Okay, so go to the That tattoos. way you can just bring it up. You can bring it up on your own screen. Yeah. Yeah. So go to that. Um, if you don't read Gurmukhi script, then go to the one with the transliteration. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, second stanza. And we're, we'll sing it both in Gurmukhi and in English. And this, this Shabbat is very, the whole meaning of the Shabbat is beautiful. I'll just read through the meaning real quick. And this is Guru Arjun. He's saying, everything is within the home, by which he means the body. Everything is within the home of the self. There is nothing beyond. One who searches outside is deluded by doubt. By Guru's grace, one who has found the Lord within is happy inwardly and outwardly. Slowly, gently, drop by drop, the stream of nectar trickles down within. The mind drinks it in, hearing and reflecting on the word of the Shabbat. The word is the Shabbat. It's the English word for the Shabbat. It enjoys bliss and ecstasy day and night and plays with the Lord forever and ever. So we'll sing those two lines over and over. I'd like you to contemplate the meaning as much as you can and follow the, the Gurmukhi. And we'll do a meditation on these words. And what I'm understanding? Yeah. Could you, could you just describe what the Guru is saying about the stream of nectar trickling yeah. down within? So Jim Jim refers to the kind of, we call it in English drizzle. It's a kind of rain that has very tiny drops, almost like fog. You can't really, they're not like really big drops of rain. It's just a very subtle moisture that just falls on everything, all the, you know, constantly, continuously. That is Jim Jim. Um, so the Guru is saying here that, that the Shabbat is like Jim Jim, you feel it. It's not, I, I don't like the word trickle, actually. I always sing drizzle because it's, it's not a trickle like a stream. It's more like just this gently falling um, presence all around. Jim Jim Varase. And then this word Amrit. And we, we have to pronounce Amrit right. It's always written in English, A-M-R-I-T, Amrit. But there's a, there's a little diacritical mark in Gurmukhi called the Angtipi at the just right after the ah sound, which means you have to vibrate it up in the nasal conch. And these shabbats work when you do this type of pronunciation. You follow exactly what's written. So if you vibrate up there, it's actually a form of ong. Ong is we also vibrate in that nasal conch behind the nose. And so this word, ongbrit, so you have to, it's not easy to do. You have to vibrate into the nasal conch and then bring the energy back down to the lips. The lips touch on the mama, on the M sound. And then you have that little rara. So it's not an easy word to pronounce correctly. So it's ang, way up in the nasal conch, angmrit, angmrit. Okay, so when you do that, you feel the energy there. It really changes the way it feels. So he's saying that the amrit is present when you, when you hear this, um, this sound that the stream, this drizzle is coming down inside. It's a, and you, it's a, it's a silent meditation. And then he says, the mind drinks it in, hearing and reflecting on the word, reflecting on the Shabbat. So this is what he's describing Simran here. When that, when the Nadang becomes activated, you begin to hear that, that word of God, that Shabbat, the mind starts to hear it and reflects on it and, concentrates on it, listens to it. And then he goes on to say that that, that action of, of hearing and listening to it and enjoying it gives bliss and ecstasy in the day and in the night, wherever you are. And, play, and then plays with the play of the Lord forever and ever. And this is again, um, brings in this concept of the fact that we never die that death is the opposite side of the coin of life. 
And this Shabbat is always with us um, because we are pure consciousness. We have a physical body, but that comes and goes. It's like a flash in the, in the cosmic sense of time. Our, our lifetime is nothing. We have this body for a short time. But we are part of the pure consciousness of the universe. And then when we die, we're still a part of that pure consciousness. And this word, this sound current, pervades everything all the time, forever. So death is not something to be feared, but something that when we die, we merge in this sound current. So this is what Guru Arjun, in my interpretation, is what he is saying here. I'm not a scholar. Um, I'm a, I guess if I were to describe myself, I'd say I'm a minstrel. But I love studying the teachings, and then I also like to look up the science of the teachings and a little bit of a nerd at this point about this stuff. So, But I'm not a scholar, and I could be wrong. And I consider this class also to be an exercise in vichar, in contemplation. So if you have a comment or you have a question or you want to, um, you could argue with me. I don't mind. You can, I guess, put it in the chat first, and Onkar can keep an eye on that to see if there's something we need to, that somebody wants to discuss, and we can talk about it. But anyway, let's uh, let's play this Shabbat a little bit. Shim shim parase. Anand 
So that is what Guru Arjan has to say. 
And um, I didn't read the whole Shabbat. He also says, I have now been united with the Lord after having been separated and cut off from him for so many lifetimes. By the grace of the holy saint, the dried up branches have blossomed forth again in their greenery. Let me just, John, John McKay, the church. See, I have the same problem. He says, by the grace of the holy saint. And the, the line is, Sumatapai nama diai gurmukhe hoe mela jio. So he's not saying gurmuk, the one whose face is turned to the guru, the holy saint. He's saying, by churning the shabad, the shabad guru in the mouth, that is where the merger comes. That is my understanding of it. Sometimes the translation, I often see in the translation that gurumukhe in the guru's mouth is translated as gurumukh, as a human being. And uh, I think the grammar is incorrect in the translation. I can be wrong. And if you want to argue with me, we can do so later. Um, next line he goes, um, I have obtained a sublime understanding and I meditate on the nam. As Gurmukh, I have met the Lord. Now here, how does he use the word Gurmukh? I don't see the word Gurmukh there, but anyway. Um, so these are fine points. It's, translations often have to be studied and looked at, and because oftentimes they also use one word to try to describe something that takes a little bit of time to go into. So then he says, as the waves of water merge again with the water, so does my light merge again into the light. Says Nanak, the veil of illusion has been cut away and I shall not go out wandering anymore. That's a beautiful Shabbat. And um, what, it, what this Shabbat means to me really on a personal, just a, a human basis is that we as humans spend way too much time looking at the physical phenomena of the world. We look for bright lights and uh, lots of like parties and lots of ways to enjoy. And we look at uh, light, sound and action. We don't look at the, at the background of it all. We don't look at the power behind it all. 99% uh, I would say of people don't look at it at all. And this is uh, the problem that humanity is facing now because without that touchstone of reality of what is the universe and who we are as a human being, then we are we're, uh, experiencing the world as an illusion. We don't have any, any connection to the truth. And this is a big problem. So uh, to me, Sikh Dharma is the answer to this. And um, this is the beauty of of this path is that we can share it in such a, a simple way with with everybody through the through the kundalini yoga classes the meditations the jap that we chant and this and the sikh dharma this the sikh gurus were so and the 30 other saints and sages if you look through the guru grand sahib at uh, saint benny and namdev and kabir they all speak of the sound current and the state of simran that they go into in the shabad and how it changed their life. And if you read, if the best place to read about the power of Simran is go to Sukhmani Sahib in the first Pauri. And he just explains everything that happens to a human who goes into a state of Simran. Very beautiful to read. And I'd like to give, it's very hard to talk about Simran. It's very hard to find a, a proper explanation. But Yogiji gave a very good one. He said, and I'll quote him now. Simran is a continuous, meditative, longingly creative feeling. It's a feeling. It's a flow. It is a touch. It is a substance. Ang sung vai guru. God is with me through every limb, every millimeter, every situation of mine. That is what he said about it. And there's another place where he talked about it in a more scientific way. He said that Simran is for the frontal lobe. The frontal load is, has the higher cognitive functions of a human, uh, uh, decision-making, motivation, solving of problems, planning, concentration. These are, are all from the frontal lobe. 
And he says, Simranin is, is exercises this. This is where the power comes from it. And it also is a center of major component of our speech, our language, which we're dealing with all the time. Then he said the jap, when we chant, is affecting the, the hypothalamus. And that's function is to gather all the information from all the cells and all the systems of the body, nervous system, glandular system, and translates it all and then sends out messages controlling all of those systems. So he said jap is for that system. So the two are very clearly, there's a difference in them. But jap leads to Simran, leads to a state of Simran. The Kriyas lead to a state of Simran. So this is uh, my best understanding of it. And it's, I was contemplating this word remembrance because the English is also polythemic. Uh, often words have multiple meanings. Remembrance is such a word in English. I didn't like this term so much because remembrance to me is when we we can hold a memorial of someone in remembrance of someone when they die, like a funeral kind of thing. Uh, it's like a conscious effort to remember something, and that's not what I understand Simran. Simran to me is a spontaneous, unforced, Guru Prasad, I would explain it, that it's a gift of the Guru. If it comes into your life, the sound current, this is a gift, not something you can make it happen. But then I realized that Remembrance has another connotation, and we all have experiences when you're trying to think of somebody's name or the name of a movie or something, it just won't come. You just, ah, I can't remember. It's on the tip of my tongue, we say. And then you, you say, okay, well, you forget about it. You stop trying. And when you stop trying, one, two hours, 24 hours later, pops into your head effortlessly. You know, oh, go, that, that was his name. I remember that. So to me, that is what Simran is. It comes spontaneously. And um, it's Guru Prasad. It's a gift of the Guru. And I think uh, the problem as a human being is this. There's, they say in Sikh Dharma, there's the five thieves of consciousness. Lust, anger, greed, pride, and attachment. And this attachment, this sense of ego, ahamkara, called. Um, this is the problem because we are, our ego is so involved in, in the minutia of life and in the excitement of life and in, or it's involved in depression and sadness and the, and the mind is chattering all the time with all of this stuff and we have the normal person has no technology to, uh, to slow that chatter down, to go beyond the chatter, to go beneath it to the underlying pattern of the universe and this is this is the problem that we are stuck in the ego. We're stuck in that, that fifth thief of consciousness. And this is what we have to overcome through, through sadhana, through chanting and meditation. And if I, I recommend to everyone, if you want to really understand what the Sikh Gurus were saying about Shabbat, go to Anand Sahib. We often spend so much time on Japji Sahib. Anand Sahib is also a very, very beautiful Bani. And he talks about, in every stanza, Guru Amaradas is talking about the Shabbat. He has many names for it. He calls it Guru Charan, the Guru's feet. He calls it the Sat Guru, the true Guru, Satti Guru. He calls it the Shabbat. He calls it the Anahad. Every stanza, he goes back to this, he goes back to the Shabbat, back to the Shabbat. And there's a beautiful story about Guru Amardas and a, a student who came to him, a simple man, a farmer, practically illiterate. And he goes into the court of the Guru and he makes his salutation to Guru Amardas and he says, yeah, I'd like to study with you, I, I want to learn. And so Guru Amardas had just written a non sahib the pure essence of the teachings. And he tells one of his other students, he says, well, why don't you go with him and teach him how to read Anand and how to meditate on Anand. And, um, you know, this, in this way he will start to learn. So the Sikh goes off with this farmer and some months later, Guru Amar Das is sitting around with some of his students. He said, whatever happened to that farmer guy that came and wanted to study and I never saw him again, what happened to him? 
and the Sikh who had gone with him said, well, I taught him the first line, and he just, um, yeah, he said, well, he said, that's, that's enough. That's all I need, and he just went away. So Guru Amadas said, well, go find him. I, I'm curious to speak with him. And so he brings him, and the guy comes and, and, and uh, does his namaste to Guru Amardas and, and Guru Amardas says, well, what happened? And this guy told me you, you just learned the first line and he <laughs> went away. And the farmer said, well, I'm a very simple man and I'm not a scholar. Um, and when I heard the first line, I just went into a state of, of bliss. I was, it was enough for me. I, didn't, I couldn't take anymore. It was all I could take. And um, it was all I needed. And that first line, of course, of Ananda is, Ananda Bhaya Meri Mai Satta Guru Me Paya. Oh, my mother, I have found the true Guru. And that's all he needed. And he went into a state of Simran right at that, just from hearing that one line, he went into that state of Simran and he was fulfilled. And so I don't think the Guru respects so much scholars, I think the Guru respects actions. And um, that, that, that story always um, communicates that to me. So I think the best way to, to uh, finish the class, we don't have a lot of time left, we'll do two um, very simple meditations that I've found are good to, uh, to raise our frequency and go into a state of Simran. Uh, both have an element of silence in them, which is, is kind of key. So the first one we'll do is just a simple technique called ajapa jap. It means that what you vibrate out, then the universe vibrates it back to you. And there's a way of practicing it. Um, so what we'll do, we'll take as any mantra you can do it with. We'll take the mantra Vahe Guru, and I'm going to chant it, and I want you to sing with me. It's not kirtan style. Kirtan style is when we when I would sing and then you would sing back and there's a constant chanting going on. In this case, um, we're going to, let me just bring this up. So I want you to chant actually with me here. And then I want you to listen to the exact same sound, the exact same vibration, uh, in the same rhythm that we're doing it with. So we'll chant together, we'll go, Vahe Guru, and then listen. Vahe Guru, listen to the universe, chant it back. And, and when you chant, also listen exactly to what you're saying as well. Don't just chant, but also listen to your own sound as you chant. And uh, we'll just do that for a few minutes. Vahe Guru Vahe Guru Vahe Guru Thank you. 
ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ 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 It's called a japa jap to chant and then listen in exactly the same rhythm and timing and and everything as you chanted it and a very good exercise in also in sunie deep listening now the next the last meditation we'll do a very simple one is called a journey into thoughtlessness it's to do a meditation that brings you into the state where there's no thoughts arising and um, this chatter of the mind becomes very quiet again we'll use the same mantra wa he gu ru your hands can be right over left thumbs can be touching just sitting in your lap very simple just like that and you're going to concentrate on this mantra at your third eye point just above and between the two eyebrows and don't even think about the breath breath is not a part it's not a breath meditation it's just you vibrate wa he gu ru from the third eye point your eyes will be closed and just let the breath become quiet on its own and just vibrate this mantra and just be in the stillness of your inner self and project the mantra out to the third eye point and just go into this space you can do it up to 31 minutes build it slowly you can start we'll do it for we have about 7 minutes so we'll do it for about 7 minutes good amount of time so um just close your eyes be in that uh mudra concentrate the third eye very simple wa he gu ru mentally it's a silent meditation and go ahead begin
and inhale and exhale. And shall we finish with May the Long Time Sun to finish class, Omkar? Yeah, okay. May the long time sun shine upon you and all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you and all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on. Guide your way on. Guide your way on. So Nam So Nam So Nam. May the Sangha be blessed with the Nam, with the state of bliss and ecstasy. May we all live in peace and prosperity and share the teachings with everyone we meet. Bless this world with peace. Bless this world with peace. Bless this world with peace. Satnam.